Holland and Donald partnership puts Hampshire in control against Warwickshire. Hampshire's campaign towards the top of Division 1 took a hit last week as they were soundly defeated by league leaders Somerset in Taunton. But they've got a real opportunity to bounce back against the Warwickshire side whose attack has been decimated by injury. They welcome Oliver Hannon Dalby, Henry Brooks, and Seema Ollie Stone back into the attack. Foregoing the toss, the Bears decided to take to the field first, and the decision was vindicated in just the fourth over. Opener Felix Organ edging the fast bowler through to Hayne at second slip to depart for just one. A good start turned into a great one. Stone once again extracting the edge, a Jinky Rahani caught by Rhodes at first slip for four. But in skipper Sam Northeast, Hampshire have a man in form fresh off the back of a century against Somerset, and he forged an important partnership with opener Ian Holland. The captain would reach his half-century as the score approached 100, the pair going well as the session neared lunch. They bring the 100 up in the overs before the interval, going into the break at 111 for two. But when they resume, the curse of the Nelson would strike, Northeast unable to build on his score of 59, caught behind off Hannon Dolby. Riley Russo would replace him at the crease and began to find boundaries of his own, batting at almost to run a ball. Holland's 50 would come as the side were on the cusp of 150, just his third half century in first class cricket. Russo would fall to Patel soon after, bowled for 34, the Warwickshire skipper spearing one into his pads from around the wicket. Anirin Donald would pick up the baton, joining his housemate Holland at the crease and batting quickly as he took on the Warwickshire bowlers. Holland continued to play the role of anchor, the home side passing 200 soon after the loss of the fourth wicket. And Donald would pick up a half century as they cruised towards 250, his 15th first class 50 coming from just 48 balls. Try as they might, Warwickshire couldn't find the breakthrough, but more worryingly, they couldn't slow the scoring, the 100 partnership coming from just 113 balls. By the time they reached T, the score was 270 for 4, Hampshire in a commanding position after an impressive batting display in the first two sessions of the day. There would be no let up from either man as the third session of play got underway, Donald continuing in the role of aggressor. But while he'd raced away, Holland had paced his innings well, and got his reward with a swept four off Patel, a maiden first class 100 for the Hampshire man. The two had put on a 150 run partnership and Donald wasn't far behind. A first century for Hampshire reached off just 103 balls. With three figures to his name, Donald freed his arms. Warwickshire had struggled to make inroads, and they took the new ball at the first opportunity. That made no difference to Donald, who continued to find the middle of his bat. There'd be even more fireworks, another six taking Donald to him within one shot of 150. He'd bring that up in spectacular fashion, pulling stone for yet another six. Holland looked to join in Donald's fun, and for a time found some success, but finally, with seven overs left in the day, he'd be removed for 143, smashing his previous career best of 58 by 85 runs, Stone with his third wicket of the day. Gareth Berg would be the next man in, and his arrival to the crease would usher in a more sedate spell, the pair now happy to see Hampshire through to the close of play. Donald would finally go in the last over of the day. He was looking to pull Brooks to the boundary when he top-edged it to Hose, out for 173. The wicket would bring an end to the day's play, it had been dominated by Hampshire and they went in at 450 for 6. Donald and Holland's partnership was worth 262, the highest for the fifth wicket in the club's history, eclipsing a record that had stood for over 80 years. It's safe to say when they return home tonight, both will be in a celebratory mood. Yates and Hayne with important partnership as Warwickshire fight back. Day one had been an impressive one for Hampshire as Ian Holland and Anurin Donald batted the side to maximum batting points, putting them in control in Southampton. The Bears bowlers had toiled. Just six wickets fell on the first day, Warwickshire struggling to make inroads until the closing stages, but they'd start day two knowing they'd get the chance to emulate their hosts on a good wicket. But first they'd had to pick up the final four wickets, and that was no mean feat. Lewis McManus would join Gareth Berg at the crease, Hampshire targeting 500. Their partnership would last just four overs, Berg bowled by Hannon Dolby for 15 as he played around a straight one. 
Barker would stick with McManus and the pair would see Hampshire past 500. Patel once again on the receiving end as Barker bludgeoned back-to-back -back boundaries. The total continued to tick over before Ben Mike picked up his first Warwickshire wicket. Barker well caught by Hose at deep mid-wicket. His departure would signal the beginning of the end. Abbott, the next man to go, trapped LBW for one off the first ball of the next over. Stone now one away from a Pfeiffer on his return from injury. That would come two balls later. Fidel Edwards removed by the England man, caught by Yates at backward point. A real improvement on their performance in recent weeks and a daunting bar set for Warwickshire. And even the most consistent of opening partnerships can feel the pressure. Rhodes out just before lunch, caught behind for nine off the bowling of Abbott. That meant they went into lunch at 15 for one, a less than ideal start. Yates and Sibley would look to reconcile, digging in as the innings got back underway. But Abbott would strike again, the informed Sibley caught in the covers by Russo for 16. Yates and Hayne would offer more resistance and the Bears number three grew in confidence, accumulating runs as the pair took their time. They'd make it through to T at 90 for two, Yates just one shot from his 50. The 19-year-old academy graduate's maiden half century would come at the restart, a moment to remember for the Solihull born number three. Hayne would follow, his own 50 brought up with a single off Abbott. On this evidence, it's easy to see why Warwickshire have high hopes for this pair and they continue to show their worth. Yates would fall agonisingly short of a maiden first-class century, caught at short mid-wicket off the bowling of Organ, the third wicket partnership worth 142 runs. Hayne was there at the end of the day, Warwickshire 198 for three in reply to Hampshire's first innings. Day one had belonged to Hampshire, but this second day of play was Warwickshire's. They hadn't put on the same monster total as their hosts, but they'd built their innings well and lost just three wickets. It looks like the home side's bowling attack will have to work hard on day three, but with the prospect of the follow-on still looming over their visitors, they'll be confident scoreboard pressure is on their side. Warwickshire wobble as Abbott takes three wickets late on day three. With the blue skies above and a wicket still in good nick, Warwickshire will fancy the task set for them at the Aegeus Bowl. Sam Hain was in good touch on day two and will resume on 68 not out, partnered by Adam Hose. There's just a small matter of a 341 run deficit to contend with. Play got underway in batting friendly conditions, with Hain taking on the bulk of the scoring as the side passed 200. But Hampshire would find the early breakthrough they were looking for when Fidel Edwards had Hose trapped LBW for 14. That wicket saw the home side's confidence grow and the experienced Ambrose joined Hain now in the 90s. The Bears keeper wouldn't stick around long, Barker the man to strike, Ambrose caught behind for just two. Hain's century came two overs later, a four off Berg taking him to the milestone for the ninth time in his first class career. He'd reply with a double wicket maiden in his next over. Ben Mike caught behind off the first ball for seven. Swiftly followed by Brooks four balls later. The returning Edwards bowled Patel, sending the skipper's off-stump cartwheeling away towards fine leg. An excellent morning session for the hosts had seen them pick up five wickets. The Warwickshire reply now in disarray, save for the innings of Hayne, going into the lunch break at 270 for eight, 120 runs behind the 390 required to avoid the follow-on. Before the break, he'd been joined by Ollie Stone, the bowler now with an opportunity to put together a potential match-saving innings to add to his Pfeiffer on return. 
It wasn't to be. Stone's 20 was a handy contribution, but there was nothing he could do. Ajinkya Rahani making the most of an overthrow to run the Bears bowler out. Rahani would play a key role in the final wicket, Hannan Dolby edging Organ through to the India International. Warwickshire all out for 307, still 232 behind Hampshire and 83 runs short of avoiding the follow-on. Holland would get them off to a positive start, finding the boundary as Hampshire looked to bat quickly. He'd go for 26 off 30, bowled by Hannan Dolby. His opening partner Organ would follow him two balls later, bowled by Patel for 18. Three overs later, Han and Dolby had two and an over. Rahane would be the first to go, trapped LBW for three. Russo was his next victim, caught by Hose at deep mid-wicket as he looked to clear the boundary. That left them 64 for 4 at the interval, Warwickshire fighting back into the game, taking the opportunities provided to them by Hampshire's swashbuckling start. One man who had seen success with an aggressive style was Anurin Donald. He attacked everything Warwickshire threw at him. An enterprising innings guiding Hampshire past three figures, the side closing in on a lead of 400, his 50 scored up just 40 balls. Donald's wicket was a product of his aggressive innings. A huge heave across the line to Patel sent the ball straight up in the air. Ambrose made no mistake with the catch. Berg's innings wouldn't reach the same heights. He advanced looking to smack Patel over the top only to miss the ball. Ambrose wasn't so profligate, the number seven stumped for five. Where Berg had failed, McManus shone, blasting 20 off just 10 balls as he took Patel to task. He'd fall to Brooks, caught by Yates in the deep. Barker would be the last man to go, looking to scoop Brooks over fine leg, only to lift it to Ambrose. The wicket would be the signal for North East to declare. Hampshire on 171 for 8. It proved to be a master stroke. Kyle Abbott was fired up and he produced a beauty to bowl Sibley, beating the outside edge and clipping the top of his off stump to see the opener out for two. A few overs later, two and two balls from the big South African had Warwickshire reeling. Another top catch from Rahan saw Rhodes go for 10 before night watchman Stone was bowled first ball for a duck. For the Bears to bite back, they'll need another partnership from the two batsmen occupying the crease, or it could mean another defeat. Hain 100 and lower order defiance sees Warwickshire escape with draw. Sam Hain hits an unbeaten 129 early on day three, but he was back batting again before stumps as a fired up Kyle Abbott claimed three late scalps to put Hampshire in command entering the final day's play. Warwickshire will resume on 31 for three and chasing an unlikely 404 to win. It was no surprise to see Abbott with the ball back in his hand at the beginning of play, but Hayne took the attack to him, sending the fourth ball of the day to the rope. But the big South African wasn't to be denied as he went round the wicket to clean bowl Yates and leave Warwickshire in deep trouble. And he was at it again in his next over, finding some prodigious movement to send Hose's stumps cartwheeling as the batsman shouldered arms to a ball that he thought was well outside off stump. But crucially, Sam Hain remained and he dug in in partnership with Ambrose. And when Edwards lost his line somewhat, Hain was able to send him to the rope three times in an over to move to his half century and back up his 100 in the first innings. Ambrose had provided valuable support to Hayne in surviving for more than 50 balls for his 14, but he had to go when he fended a Barker delivery to Rahane at second slip. Mike came out and decided to play a few shots as he helped himself to three fours from a Barker over just before lunch, which Warwickshire reached on 119 for six, with Hayne still there on 60, but the target still a very long way off. Mike picked up in the afternoon where he'd left off in the morning as he picked up two more boundaries off Barker in the first over after lunch. 
With Hampshire beginning to get frustrated, Mike moved to an excellent maiden first class 50 as Warwickshire continued their fight to save the game. And Hayne moved to 87 with two boundaries in the space of three Holland balls before two more for Mike saw Warwickshire move past 200 and bring up the pair's 100 partnership before the tea break. A brilliant session for Warwickshire came to a close, one that has given them real hope of saving the game. Holland made the crucial breakthrough to break the stand of 120 not long after tea as Mike feathered him behind to McManus standing up to the stumps. Before Hayne brought up his second 100 of the match from the next ball, a new man Brooks went on the attack with back-to-back -back fours in the same over. But Organ had the last laugh as he found some outrageous turn out of a foothold to bowl the Centurion and leave Hampshire on the brink of a hard-fought win. Brooks and Patel hung in though and frustrated Hampshire again as they attempted to go down fighting. Patel sent the new ball hurtling to the fence from consecutive Kyle Abbott deliveries as he moved to 20. Patel brought up his 50 and the Warwickshire 300 with a lovely on-drive off Berg as the overs counted down. The 100 partnership was brought up and the overs eventually ran out for Hampshire, with Patel and Brooks still defiant and undefeated on 70 and 36 respectively, as Warwickshire escaped with a miraculous draw given the position they were in at lunch. Hampshire must settle for 12 points from the contest, while Warwickshire will take 9. Oh.